Europe, 1940. Hitler's ruthless quest to extend Germany's borders has his people at war with the world. The mobilization of armies by Britain and France proved no deterrent as the Nazis invade their European neighbors to the north and west, while extending their reach eastward towards Russia's critical oil fields. By fall, Germany's lightning war to soften England is launched, and America increases production, racing to aid the British. By 1941, the battle for North Africa is on as Rommel's Africa Corps arrives in Tripoli. On the Eastern Front, an impatient Hitler breaks his pact with the Soviets. Stalin responds with a scorched earth policy, intent on leaving only ruins for the Nazi invaders. But one by one, his cities fall. Now, in 1942, massive German air raids commence against Stalingrad, and the battle for this noble city turns vicious. The Red Army refuses to retreat, and a counteroffensive is launched against a force that now stretches from the Volga to the Atlantic and deep into the African desert. Against impossible odds, millions come forward to answer the call of their countries, their families, their lives. My name is Alexander Sokolov. I thought I was safe. As a watchmaker's apprentice, I would learn the business, then open a shop of my own. Maybe get married, have children, start a life. But now our cities are under attack, and Stalingrad will put an end to those dreams. We should have known the Germans would turn on us, break the treaty. They have no honor. The commissars rounded us up so quickly, speaking of the motherland, the sacrifice of our brothers, our duty. I'm only 20, but I'm ready to fight to the death. The sight of my home, Stalingrad, infuriates me. It is as if hell itself were burning. You're about to begin the greatest moment of your life. The Germans have lost hundreds of tanks and planes. Hitler's brutalized hordes are now advancing towards Stalingrad over mountains of their own dead bodies. Our Bolshevik party, our nation, our great country have given us the task not to let the enemy reach the Volga and to defend the city of Stalingrad. Forward against the enemy! Up into the unremitting battle, comrades! For Stalingrad! For our great country! Not for a step back! Guards and traders will be shot! Do not count days! Do not count miles! Count only the number of Germans you have killed! Kill the German! This is your mother's prayer! Kill the German! This is the cry of your Russian earth! Do not waver! Do not let up! Kill! Death to the German invader! My name is Tanya Pavlovna. We had little idea the Nazi invasion had pushed as far as our village until the night we awoke to the sound of tank tracks grinding in the distance. Tank shells sent my neighbors scurrying for cover. And in the chaos I was separated from my parents. The next day I was rescued by soldiers with the Red Army. I was 25. During my first skirmish our squad was cut down and I escaped into a collapsed building where I took a sniper rifle off the body of a fallen comrade. My father's voice guided my aim as I cut down my first four Germans with that rifle. My skill was reported to HQ and I was assigned as a sniper and sent to Stalingrad. I've been hunting Germans ever since. They took my family and my home, and I intend to take their lives. Got a clear shot. What are you waiting for? An explosion. We need something to cover the sound of the rifle. Ah, 
And if I shoot enough of these Germans, they'll send a tank to come looking for us. Then we'll need to cover our sapper on the street so he can place a landmine in its path. This is it. Always try to shoot the officers first. Let's relocate. My name is Nikolai Badenov. The day after the Germans attacked the Soviet Union, I left my wife and newborn son in the care of my parents and joined the Red Army. Having been a mechanic in Leningrad for years, it was no surprise I was assigned to the 24th Tank Corps. I live for the day we grind Berlin beneath our tracks. Perhaps it's this aggressiveness that won me my own tank crew and assignment in Stalingrad. While my crew and I are like family, there's another comrade who I'll be tied to forever. Her name is Tanya Pavlovna, and she saved our skins as we escaped in the last surviving T-34 after an assault on an old factory near Volgograd. But our tank soon had engine trouble, and the smoke plume was giving away our position. So we found what looked to be a safe place to make repairs. Engine trouble? Danya, you and Alexander find some high ground and watch for the enemy. We'll do what we can, Nikolai. And Fyodor, let's get that tank fixed now. Yes, sir. Coordinates now. New target. Five point Bravo. Angle 78 degrees. Range 100 meters. Confirm. Over. Confirm. That armored column is a junkyard now! Thank you, Lieutenant. This has been one hell of a day. December 24, 1942, Christmas Eve. What we began at Stalingrad, we were to finish as part of Operation Little Saturn on a remote airfield near the small village of Tatsinskaya. Our assignment was to approach the airfield from the north via the River Don, cutting off and encircling the stranded German forces Hitler had forbidden to retreat. There at Tatsinskaya, we would surprise the airfield, destroying as many aircraft as we could cutting off the resupplying of Nazis in the Stalingrad pocket. This was an assignment I was going to enjoy. But as we were about to spring our attack, the Germans got word we were there and launched a frantic evacuation. We may have missed yelling surprise, but there was still plenty of party to be had. Your orders are to take control of the enemy airfield near Tatsinska to prevent them from resupplying the 6th Army at Stalingrad. This is a critical mission, comrades. Best of luck! Raven, this is platoon leader. What is your status, over? Platoon leader, the Raven here. Our trucks are in position. We need 10 minutes to set up the rockets. Over! Hold positions until... Stuka! Stuka! Incoming! We have been spotted! Raven, we cannot wait! Get your rockets in position now! 
We will take care of those bombers. Look, this will certainly make some heads turn. Let's get back to headquarters. Nice bonfire you lit up today, comrades. That should keep us warm most of the winter. By controlling North Africa, the Axis powers would have a better chance of holding the Mediterranean, now the epicenter of the war. Unfortunately for Italian dictator Benito Mussolini, his army is ill-prepared to withstand the British forces in the region. Hitler, fearful that more losses in Africa would jeopardize his efforts on the Russian front, sends General Rommel and his Africa Corps to clean up the mess. By 1942, the Allies decide that the best way to break the Axis powers back is to create another front. An Operation Torch is born of British and American troops, a well-supported, coordinated push through enemy lines. Depleting and destroying fuel, food, and equipment would mean the eventual fall of the Third Reich in Africa, weakening Axis aggression throughout the world. All goes as planned, and by January 1943, British General Montgomery's 8th Army has Rommel and his troops on the run, scrambling to make their valiant last stand at the Marath Line. My wife finally wrote saying, Edward Carlyle just asked to do something else. So I did. It turns out having a background in teaching chemistry can get you out of a desk job pretty quick if you have a mind to it. I knew nothing of Popsky's private army or its ties to the desert rats until I was in training. This sabotage platoon's philosophy is lightning fast strikes and massive explosions deep behind enemy lines. It's gratifying to know that every time we light up a fuel depot or munitions dump, we're stalling Rommel's tanks and helping those poor blighters on the front lines. It may not be fighting fair, but the Germans have hardly fought fair in Europe, so to hell with them. My assignments are highly confidential, so as far as the wife knows, I'm still sitting at a desk. But for some strange reason, I've stopped complaining. Have a cozy, have a cozy little setup in this village here. Our job is to break as much equipment as possible, and then dash out before they even know what hit them. Troop B will drive the jeeps behind the Germans and pepper them with machine gun fire. I lead Troop A through town to knock out their communications and burn up their petrol reserves. Carlisle, you're the man with the demolitions. We'll cover you while you set the time to save four charges. We have to get in and out before everything becomes all spotlights, sirens, and rifles firing. Cock your guns, watch your sights, and ride on. Let's go! Navigating the desert like an ocean of sand, you have to know where you're going and have a plan to get in and out as quickly and quietly as possible. We do prefer it when quietly is not required. The one thing that allows us to hit the enemy where it hurts most is our jeeps. They're always loaded with enough fuel, supplies, and water to travel 600 miles at a stretch. Although unarmored, they can be heavily armed with 250 cal MGs firing armor-piercing and incendiary rounds. These make us quick and deadly when we need to be, able to take on German half-tracks and armored cars that outclass us in every other way. Still, this doesn't make up for the fact that you're completely exposed to fire sitting in an open jeep. And you'd better have a damn good driver at the wheel should trouble arise. And it always does, mate. Look alive, Carlisle! I got word on the wireless that some of our old mates from the Long Range Desert Group are lying doggo in an old fortress surrounded by Jerry's. We've got to save them. Those chaps found a shortcut through the desert that leads straight to Rommel's back door. You and I are leading the charge. The rest of the men will catch up with us at the fort. Protect my hide while I refuel the jeep. Keep your eyes peeled. We won't be alone for long.
Sniper! Watch it! It's about time you chap showed up. Well, we had a few errands to run. Hey! Kablam! Oh, Were you just gonna leave me out there? <laughs> By 1944, in the battle to regain their Russian homeland, the Red Army crushes the German pocket at Stalingrad, marking the first major defeat of Hitler's armies. On June 6, D-Day, the Allies stage a massive sea and air invasion on the Normandy coast that will soon lead to a full-scale retreat of Germany's once powerful armies across France and Belgium. Inspired by this success, British Field Marshal Montgomery devises a plan he insists will end the war by Christmas, codenamed Market Garden. With momentum on their side, the Allies attack Germany's industrial heartland from the north, attempting to outflank the powerful Siegfried Line, intending to drive on to Berlin. But Montgomery's plan fails miserably when the final bridge across the Rhine cannot be secured. Painful defeat and staggering losses destroy all hope for an early end to the war and surviving allies are ordered back to France. Fortunately, by October, with the Siegfried Line finally breached from the west, the Americans prepare for the capture of Aachen, a city destined for the dubious distinction of being the first major German city to fall to Allied forces. My name is Chuck Walker. I've been attached to the First Army, the Big Red One, for a long time now. I fought in North Africa and Sicily. I landed in Normandy on D-Day. Every day I fight to save my life and the lives of my men. I'm proud we're on the front lines. I know none of us are going home until the Germans surrender completely, and we want to be right there when it happens. And that's why Aachen is so important. It's time to take this fight right to Germany, where it began. This isn't about medals or honor. Those things don't matter when you're fighting for your life. This is about winning the war. And fighting with the Big Red One has taught me you win a war by surviving it. And that means killing the Germans before they kill me. This is it. We're taking Hawking today. The Germans in the town square are cut off from their command and control. But those old buildings are solid enough to resist shelling. Orders are to escort the M12 to the town square, clearing buildings of German resistance on the way. Once we're inside the city hall, the M12 will blow the bitch to pieces. Stay close behind the tanks for cover and protect them from German anti-armor. We lose the Shermans and we're all dead. Let's saddle up and get it done. Sarge. Some of those old buildings are too fortified for the tanks to take out. What are we gonna do about them? Relax, Benny. We're gonna knock them all down. Scratch two panzers! And here comes the big gun! This shouldn't take long. German city to fall. We got him on the run now, Sarge. Bet you we're home for Christmas. Yeah, I believe that when I see it. My name is Sam Rivers. The day after the attack on Pearl Harbor, me and my best friend Jim rushed to enlist in the U.S. Army. Most of our buddies from the neighborhood in Chicago did the same. I was only 18. I barely had enough time to say my goodbyes, get packed, 
and marry my sweetheart Maggie three hours before we shipped out for basic training. I was assigned to the 761st Tank Battalion, which was almost entirely made up of colored folk, except for the officers. We were not particularly welcome at Camp Hood, but this just drove us to build an unstoppable team and earn the respect of everyone we met. General Patton himself saw us in action and insisted we be attached to his Third Army and sent to Europe. Today we're near the town of Tillett. Every other American unit assigned to take this town has tried and failed. Now it's our turn. We're all fighting for something more than just defeating the enemy. Every man in the 761st has something to prove to himself and to the folks back home. For us, victory has a double meaning. Listen up, everybody. Job today is to capture Tillet and cut the highway the Germans are using to supply the assault on Bastogne. Main force will split up and take different routes to encircle the town. You all know your teams. We're supporting the 87th today, so watch out for infantry under your tracks. My squad will escort the M12s to their firing positions, then roll into town after the artillery softens them up. Main assault will begin when my group hits the east entrance to town. Let's move out, and when you see the Germans... <laughs> and give them hell. Good job, everybody. No way the Nazis are gonna get supplied against Bastogne now. Charlie Company, come in. Charlie Company, please respond. This is Sergeant Rivers, Charlie Company, over. Rivers, this is headquarters. Command, review the enemy strength report and orders on a break off assault on Tillett. Do not go into that town, Sergeant. It's too hot in there. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. I'm already through that town. It's been four grueling months since we took our first German city at Aachen. That mission and the weeks that followed have been particularly difficult. A bitter, cold fight trying to hold off the Germans and stave low was one of the few times in this war I actually thought I might not make it back home. My men came out decorated for their sacrifices. But that doesn't change the fact that we paid a heavy price to get into Germany. We've been hearing rumors that a bridge across the Rhine is still intact and we're heading there to check it out. The end of this war is close, we all know that. Germany has nowhere to stay but home. And that's no longer a safe place to sleep. Hey Sarge, why are we heading to this town again? That bar means Lieutenant Sergeant Church. Or did you forget about those battlefield promotions after our last mission? I ought to bust you right back down to Buck Private. Sorry, sir. Still getting used to the new stripe myself. So where were we headed? Some little town called Remagen. HQ ordered us to scout it out since there was an old railroad bridge leading across the Rhine. The thing is, the Germans are in the habit of burning all their bridges behind them as they retreat into the fatherland. So, we're looking for a bridge that probably isn't even there. A bridge across the Rhine River would give us a direct line to move tanks and men straight into Germany. Those Germans aren't foolish enough to let that happen. March 1945. With the bridge across the Rhine into Remagen secured, the Allies pour into Germany. 
bringing the fight against the Nazis directly to the Third Reich's doorstep. German forces in the Ruhr River Valley surrender as the Soviets reach Berlin. The once proud, seemingly invincible German army, which had sought to usurp additional territory from neighbors as far as the Soviet Union to the western edge of Europe and North Africa, is now forced to desperately defend and hold on to its own original homeland. The unconditional surrender of all German forces to the Allies, without which President Roosevelt had declared the war could not end, would not be long in the making. A world that had long been at war would soon be able to rejoice. The guys that are doing this thing, they're just fanatics on it, which is wonderful. And, and uh, you know, the young kids can actually see what their granddads did, you know, and, uh, and it actually comes home to them. And it, plus, it's, you know, it, it keeps you thinking all the time as well. So, and, so I love that kind of thing, you know. It's fascinating to me. Against impossible odds, millions come forward to answer the call of their countries, their families, their lives. Okay. Really good. I do feel like you're rushing a bit, so you can slow down. You can slow down just a little really bit. Fast. Um, uh, and definitely, you can slow down on that last line too. You know, against the last line. You can in the desert, fought in the desert with uh, the desert rats, and uh, the you know, Durham Light Infantry. And uh, then he went to Anzio. So you know, with every now and again, he didn't talk about it much. But every now and again, we get little tidbits, little snippets of what really happened. And it fascinated us as three small boys. We just used to hang on to every word. So we had the tools to work with, but we still didn't have the armor. We only had four inches of armor. The Tiger Royal had twelve. And he couldn't use the armor. You couldn't knock him out if you hit him in front. So we learned ourselves how to defeat it. 